Today, we take it back to 2011 for our 14th modular building. So let's get into it. Hello and welcome to Bricks and Toys. My name is Brandon and today I am here with The Pet Shop. This LEGO Advanced Models is set number 10218 coming in at 2,032 pieces. And I don't know a whole lot about the set other than the fact that this is the one that people talk about the most in a negative way. When people talk about their least desired modular buildings, this one gets thrown under the bus the most. I don't know why it's not the bookshop. I can see that one being totally that but it's this one. Now, to my knowledge, this was the last build done by designer Jamie Berard. So after this, we will have three Jamie Berard buildings in our Lego City, which is exciting. There's only two more to do after that. Everything else is just him as an overseer of everything. And because I don't know a lot about this set, Let's dive over to my computer and let's just go over this build together. And this will also give you kind of a look into how we go over and we find these used sets. Because this set is used, the box is open on one of these ends, and the box is pretty ratty. So let's go over here and let's just start taking a look at what we can find. So this set was purchased by us for it looks to be $200 and $40 worth of shipping. So $240 out the door for this old pet shop. And let's just see what it says. This is an open box item that was previously assembled and is 100% complete. Pieces have been sorted into numbered Ziploc bags that correspond to the instruction manual. Set is in excellent condition. I've heard that before. So... And then they put, there is a crease in the original box. There is a crease in the, in the original box? Oh, no. But, honestly, guys, there's a crease, like, that's a crease, that's a crease, that, that, that. There's, like, a hundred creases on this box. So, they're really underselling there's a crease in the box. So, did we get a good deal on this set? Let's find out. So now, we know we paid about $240 for this one out the door. Now let's go over to our, our brick link. They claim it's excellent condition, and they claim that it's in numbered bags, that they resort it, and they claim that everything is here. So we're going to do, we're going to do used on brick link. We're going to do complete sets on brick link. And we're going to do it USA Market, because that's where I live. And let's just start taking a look. Has been opened, built, and disassembled. Might have a few missing broken pieces. Okay, you're out. Instructions included. Ships, mail only. That does not allow detail. 100% complete with all pieces and minifigs. Includes original instructions. In used condition. No box. You're out. Concludes all pieces except two white envelopes. Complete with box and instructions. All great condition okay so that is the first one that that states it has a box it has all the pieces and it's in a very good state of condition that one on Bricklink right now is selling for 245 dollars and you will have to pay shipping on top of that 245 dollars plus taxes so we did good on this set with the statements provided that is so that's kind of how i go in and i take a look at how we do these sets. We know that there's always going to be a $40 plus tax shipping charge when buying these things online. We paid about $240 by $250-ish out the door for this set and the one on Bricklink in the nearest condition is that price alone without shipping and taxes. So we got a good deal based on what we're told. So that is good. Now, let's just go over here to Brickset, and let's, and now Brickset is where I go to get all my information about these sets for you guys. Now, 
This set did come out in 2011. That I did already know because I've been studying these buildings. I love these buildings. And one day it's my goal to have them all in the LEGO City. Now, to find the designer of this set is really hard to find the designer. I had to go through multiple forums to which I found out that it was Jamie Burrard, like I, st like I stated originally in the beginning of this video. And new, this set was the, the traditional $150 set. Now, why is it important to bring up the fact that it originally was $150? Well, the fact is, is... You can buy it used, pre-assembled for $200. Only $50 more than its original price. So that puts it into perspective how this one was kind of a dud. And if I'm all about conspiracy theories, that's why Jamie Barrard does not stamp his name all over this one. It's probably because he doesn't want people to know that he built this. So, comment down below if you think that that's a connection. Because I think that is. But anyway... There's not much more to say about the facts and all of that stuff. It is what it is. It is an advanced models. It is the older generation of Creator Expert. Even if it could, it wouldn't come with numbered bags. It probably just came with one or two and said, sort and have a good, have a good time. Now, it does seem that this set does come in two different pieces. And if it does, then I think this is the only other building besides the bookshop that does that. So let's go take a look at what we get in this used set. I've had this set for about a month now, and I've been... I went through a loss, as you guys know. Things that were more important got in the way, and all I did was just do this. Oh, looks fine. Continue about my day. So now let's actually let's take a look at what we're getting with this. So we do have... Two 16 by 32 base plates. These are, as far as I'm told, they don't make these anymore. So that's why we have to cut our base plates to make them work for the city. We do have our instructions. Now what's really cool is that the instructions are still kind of in the same way that they would be originally. To where there are two books in a bag with a cardboard background. So that is really cool to note. And they are in pretty good shape. They got, the, they got the infamous blue background and all that. Parts list is at the back of the book. Hey, look, it's a T1 camper van. I just built that a few months ago on the channel. Yeah, it does look like it is a two-book build. I honestly really do kind of like this one, you know, because it is two separate buildings. One's kind of the reddish. It seems like a lot of the early buildings were red and tan. And then it comes with a blue one, which kind of separates everything. So that's really cool. Fun fact is, that's the same dog that they used in the Fire Brigade. So we have a numbered bag. One, four, two, and three. So we got one, two, and three, and four numbered bags. Now let's go and open up one of these bags and take a look. at These bags look right at it. So let's see what we get. So I'm looking at like white pieces and their condition. There is some white that's exposed. Doesn't look too bad. We do have our, our pry tool. Let's see if it's generation appropriate. I think it is. Let's verify that. Yep. And then one that I do know is from the olden days. My old faithful. Yep. So they didn't just take a separator and throw it in the bag. This is one from the appropriate era of the set. It is built with a much more lighter, denser plastic. Uh, what I would like to do to call it is easier to crack from what it sounds like. Now I don't see any minifigures because, well, for the first time ever in a used set, they literally took apart the minifigures 110%. I don't see any dust, I just see things stuck to one another, like this thing had a bumpy ride from Indiana. I did see a window piece. Oh, uh, here's a black door. That's a good gauge. Black scratch is easy. That's in really good shape. Now where's a dang window at? I want to see a window. 
here's another white piece. This goes right down there. Not yellow, that's good. Oh, right there's a window. Windows are a really good telltale sign of how a set has been taken care of because they scratch super easy. Let's take a look. Yeah, what you would expect. So, so far, this looks all good. I don't have any complaints. The minifigures are taken apart. This is going to be one of those that I'm going to probably not clean, like I did the Grand Emporium, and I'm just going to take the uh, chance. Let's dive into bag four and let's take a look. Here we'll start finding dirt on the plates. There is none. I wonder if they cleaned it before they bagged it. If they did, man, that's a hell of an operation that they got going on there. Dark gray would usually be rough. I don't see any. Well, black would be the roof. Here we go. Yeah, it's clean. That that would be a roof plate. So, what we're going to do on this one, because of how it is, we're not going to clean it. We're just going to go in. We're just going to do a straight up build. So, on that one, I am going to time lapse this for y'all. So, enjoy the time lapse. We'll be back here to review the 2011 Pet Shop. Okay, so now it's time to do our review on the pet shop. Now, these are two separate buildings, but I did build them on the same base plate. So, we're going to go over the cosmetics and then the internals. So, on the box, it does depict a bird being up here. The bird technically comes from the window down here, but I wanted those birds there. So I went into my inventory and I added the owl. So that's a custom touch. The other thing is, is this whole top piece was missing from the parts. So I had to put a plate in here with these two top pieces to make that work. So this is a custom shape that's different than what they suggest, but it works. This piece was missing, but I had a replacement. And I added some stud tiles down here to make those minifigures stand up. I don't have a better way to do the bike for right now. So, the other little modification is, is the flowers outside of the window. I could not find the instructions to build those 
at all. So I took some leftover parts and I built it. Because I think the flowers outside that window look really nice. And I don't know why I could not find that step in the instructions. Coming down, we do have flowers outside of that window. Really nice uh, brick and nougat coloring, red roof. It's built very similar to the bookstore. Here we got some nice skis making up a nice little doorway right there. We do have a mailbox right there. We have a cat walking in on, on our video. There we have our first minifigure outside. Through the window we can see some flowers. And coming up we can see some nice more curved windows. And then those windows do open up under that awning. And then we do have a water pipe going down the side of the building for like some drains. Coming over to this one, we do have a nice skylight and some nice light blue brickwork all the way down. A lot of flower elements in the windows, brick built pets sign, nice little awning and nice little doorway with some merchandise like dog bones being sold out front. Really cool stuff. And then we have a nice little gateway to go to the upstairs condo with another mailbox hidden down in there. Coming around the side, it's just brick. And coming around the back, we can see that we do have like an outdoor garden area. But again, just brick. Nothing too special. Nice use of the windows. And then we have some containers back here. Looks like the pet shop left off some supplies, and looks like the pet shop has a mice problem. We do have a basement to the building, just like with the bookstore that came 10 years after it, or 9 years after this. More flowers in the window. A trash can coming around, just brick. Now, let's take off our levels. Unlike our previous build, these are back to using studs to hold them down tight. Both roofs come off like so. So now I'll take off our first level. Now this one has nothing going on at all. Just some boxes. Other than that, it's very plain. Coming down on our pet shop floor. Again, not much going on, but we do have a lamp with a bed on that floor. Next floor, pull it off. This is the one that's really cool. It's just a paint bucket and a guy painting a wall. That's all this floor is. So definitely some renovations going on with that property. Coming down into our next floor of the pet shop side. Looks like we got a little studio apartment. That's where those stairs come up into, where there's a door where they can get in. Now, on the actual base floor of the build, we can see the bottom floor of the next door house. There is a bathroom on the other side of that door. I don't know why you would put a front door type door there. Maybe when they built it, that's all that they had the parts for at that time. Really simplistic, but kind of nice. Coming into the actual pet shop, we can see some birds for the sale in there. We got some supplies. We got a cat. I guess the cat's the one that's going after that mouse that's out here. And then we do have a doggo right down there. We can lift these stairs up out of the way so you can go and get that dog out. So that is that. And then we do have an aquarium tank right over there. So that is the pet shop. Now let's actually go to our studio to wrap up this video. So now I'm all the way at the other end of the studio for this segment of the video. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you my final thoughts on the pet shop, which is going to be really quick and simple. Then we're going to slide it all the way in. My final thoughts on the pet shop is it is a super underappreciated and underrated set. I don't know if anybody will ever catch on on how unique this set is, but I say if you don't have it and you're trying to collect them all, get it while it's only $200 to $250 used. I really enjoyed the set. I can see the major progress going from the Grand Emporium to this build, 2010 to 2011. I can see how the evolution was done. I can see how there was an attempt to make a fuller interior. 
there was some creative ways to get out of making a fuller interior, like painting the wall. This is the second modular building, well the first out of two, that had two separate 16 by 32 base plate buildings on top of it. And this one and that one, to me, are at the bottom of the list for being the most interesting as terms of what people say. But this one is so much better then the bookshop. I love this build. I loved everything about it. It's captured in time. It's just wonderful for what it is. So I don't know why it's so slept on and why it's so underappreciated, but it is what it is. Pe people's hate is my gain, and I love this build, and it is a definite recommend. Now, let's start sliding these four buildings into the city. Let's lock down those tiles, and let's get this thing going, everybody. So the first thing I want to do, I don't know how much you can see from over there. I, I need to remove lights, and I need to remove the front trim. So I'm going to do that for both buildings. Now, I will be reusing this trim just in a different way. I just need it cleared off so I know where the parking stalls will line up for the street. So I'm just going to put all that down right there. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this building. And now we're good to go. So now let's come over here, shrink, and let's make way for the building. Or as Blink-182 would say, make way for the hurt kid. So, let me see, my best strategy might just be, oh, frick, man, just yank that all off. I have built my mills plates stronger than they can handle. There we go. That's going to go right down there in the middle as a support. There we go. Now, let's try to rip this up without too much casualty, and this is going to come out. Now I have made my room to try to get these buildings to slide right on in. My first two is going to be the jazz club with the pet shop. Oh, looks like I did break some branches off trying to squeeze by. Crap. The Grand Emporium. Just going to slide them on in back to back. Come on. There we go. Lots of stuff to work around with in the Lego City. Okay, we're locked in. Okay, we're flat on the table. Now, let's try to get everything lined back up correctly and locked together. Easy peasy. And touchdown. The Eagles have landed. And holy shoot, that looks amazing. So now let's... Go ahead and put our table back together. I hope you guys can see the progress because it's it's looking like a full house, everybody. This is the first time I'm actually looking at the pool hall next to the pet store, and it looks really good. So let me go get some triangles and some tiles, and we'll get this thing all done up. Okay, I got my parts. Now we're just going to go through, and let's do it to it. Everything's been laid out. Everything's been pre-planned. This should go relatively easy, but I have been known to be wrong before. Okay, Space Coaster is going to come out. Okay, let's do it. So by pulling the Space Coaster, I'm able to really lean in here and start getting things tiled up. It's not easy being a big boy and trying to do, to do this kind of stuff. But we got it. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to put our space coaster back. And then we are going to put you guys over here. Then I'm going to come over there, pull out Hocus Pocus, lean over, get the rest of this all buttoned up. This is looking freaking mint. Okay, so now we're ready to pull out our Hocus Pocus on this side. There we go. Now let's start adding our pieces right there done okay everybody the lego city is completed for now so what i'm going to do is i'm going to wrap up this video stay tuned uh 
after I'm done wrapping up the video for a tour of this section, everybody. So on that one, if you like the video, comment down below. Let me know what you think. What do you think about these new buildings? Do you, do you like them? Do you like to see the new growth in the LEGO City? Let me know. Looks like we have a lot of good alley space back here. And on that one, like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I hope you all have a good one. Okay, let's bring you guys in. There's the Grand Emporium and how it works in with the corner garage. All the way down to the detective station, to the pet, pet shop. Coming down, you see how it looks across the street. Let's go over to the other side. And here it is from the Jazz Club to the pet shop. And across the street. <laughs>